Uh, so welcome back to my channel. Today I would like to thank you guys very much because of you who are able to be listed as part of the top 35 anatomy YouTube channels to watch. And we thank you because uh, this is the first channel from an African country to be listed here. And if you go to the Google search for the top 35 anatomy YouTube channels, you'll be able to see uh, we've been able to be listed there. And so we thank you very much. If you haven't uh, liked and subscribed to this channel, please do uh, leave a comment and let's start on today's topic. So we are looking at the histology of the connective tissue system. And so these are usually the kind of questions you expect to get when you're doing a practical exam, when you get uh, what you call a marathon exam or a picture uh, exam. So you get a picture like this and then you're asked to identify the tissue while giving a reason. And then the second bit of the question, we are told to state two modes of growth of the tissue shown above. So this tissue, okay, that is bone tissue. And how you identify it is that there is the presence of the Havasian canal and the presence of the concentric lamella of osteocytes in lacuna. So this is actually the Havasian canal. You can be able to see that. And then you have these are your lacunae, and you can see they are arranged concentrically. That means it's like in a, a round pattern, okay? Like this, this rounded pattern. So you have this concentric arrangement, and then you have the uh, Havasian canal. Now the two modes of growth of bone is usually either intramembranous ossification or endochondral ossification. So endochondral ossification refers to the presence of cartilage as the model of the scaffold for the growth of bone. Then in intermembranous ossification, you basically just have mesenchyme as your backbone. So question two, identify the structure shown and give a reason. Then name the resident cell types in the dermis of skin. Now this is actually what we call the growth plate. So how you identify it is that you have zones of differential growth and then you have that transition from cartilage to bone. So this is actually the differentiation of the zones. So if you look at the cell types here, the cell types here, these cell types, you can actually see they are in different zones of uh, development. So usually we start from a resting zone. Okay, so there is that resting zone. And then you go into a rapid phase of proliferation. And so because the proliferation is faster than the way they can be able to arrange themselves, you get this kind of palisade arrangement. So you get this, uh, like you're stacking coins on top of each other because of that rapid uh, proliferation. And so within this phase now, you now move to the zone of hypertrophy. So the cells now become very large. They start becoming big. Okay. And so these, remember, are cartilage cells. So when they hypertrophy, at this uh, phase, there is now apoptosis that occurs. So they start dying out. And once this happens, you now go to the zone of calcification. So these ones that are dying, the cells that are dying, you now get uh, calcification. And so usually you get uh, vessels of blood coming in, there's increased oxygen tension, and then now you bring in your uh, calcium and basically your osteoid matrix starts to form. And then once this osteoid matrix starts to form, then you start forming bone. And that now this is the zone of ossification. So the resident cell types in the dermis of skin will be fibroblast and myofibroblast. So remember, the dermis of skin is actually connective tissue. It's actually considered dense, irregular connective tissue. And so the resident cells of dense connective tissue will be fibroblast, myofibroblasts. Then now you have this picture here. You are being asked to identify the structure and give a reason. And then to give the components of the extracellular matrix. So this is actually hyaline cartilage. And how you recognize hyaline cartilage is that you have these what we call isogenous groups. Okay? Iso means same, genus means origin. That means that these chondrocytes are coming from the same progenitor cell. And then they are organized within these lacunae. Okay? So you have the same progenitor cell that divides, undergoes mitosis, and divides and forms these cells, which are within the same lacunae. 
so this lacuna usually has a, a capsule outside so there's usually a capsule outside so you get these uh, isogenous groups of chondrocytes okay within the lacunae now you can have up to a maximum of eight chondrocytes within one lacunae that is normal okay so here you can get three here you get about two so this is actually a uh, very normal and then now remember the other concept is that you have asked to talk about the components of the extracellular matrix now the extracellular matrix has two things ground substance and fibers remember ground substance is that gel material the glycosamine glycans proteoglycans and then now you have the fibers these are now your collagen your reticular fibers your elastic fibers okay so here you're told to identify the tissue and give a reason and here you're told to name two sites that contain elastic cartilage so here you can be able to see this or parallel organization of connective tissue fibers so this is actually collagen type 1 so this longitudinally arranged parallel collagen fibers actually represent what we call tendinous fibers so this is actually the slide of a tendon so this is dense regular connective tissue this is dense regular connective tissue and this F that you are seeing here these are actually fibroblasts okay Usually they are spindle shaped nuclei like this. So this is actually nuclei of fibroblast cells. And so you are asked to give two sites that contain elastic cartilage. So they have the pin of the ear, the ala of the nose, and the epiglottis. Then you are asked to identify the tissue shown. Now this tissue is actually elastic cartilage. Okay. Now, two types of connective tissue fiber. Remember, you have elastic fibers, collagen fibers, reticular fibers, which are basically collagen type 3. Now, elastic cartilage usually has elastic fibers and there's the presence of the perichondrium. Okay? So that is how you identify this. The fact that you have these, these are actually elastic fibers. Okay, these are elastic fibers. So you have elastic fibers within the extracellular matrix. And then you have the presence of the uh, perichondrium. So thank you very much uh, for listening. If there's any question, you can leave them on the uh, comment section below.